found you, Ghost. The leader of Raven's Rock. You might have heard of it. If you're fast enough, you may be able to save innocence from a horrible death. The timer has begun. Hurry. Save the others. And try not to die. Armor on drone locked. Ready for uplink. According to Russian folklore, there are actually two different types of werewolves. One is known as the Wayukalak. This type of werewolf is the result of an individual seriously angering the devil, and in turn is punished and has been transformed into a werewolf. However, the Wayukalak were most often not considered to be evil or even dangerous. In fact, after they had been turned, they would usually just return to their village in search of love and affection from friends and family. Unfortunately for them, they were also cursed to spend their days moving from house to house and village to village, as they are unable to stay in one place for long, forced to rely on the kindness of others to provide them with food. Which brings me on to the other type of werewolf, which is known as the Bodark. Because in contrast to the Wayukalak, the Bodark has chosen to become a werewolf, transformed by a ritual that involves venturing into the forest and stabbing the trunk of a tree with a copper knife. The individual then recites an incantation and in turn becomes a werewolf. Most importantly, the outcome of this werewolf is very distinctive. They maintain all of their human mental capabilities and also become incredibly strong, savage, cunning and intelligent. They are intensely loyal to their own kind, along with those they have deemed to be a part of their pack. Unofficially named Bodark, the details and existence of these Russian soldiers appears to be highly confidential. According to the Russian Defense Ministry, there is no official record of them. This implies that they are a highly covert unit that operates under the Foreign Russian Military Intelligence Agency. The Bodark were first discovered by the United States government after receiving intel from a confidential source who was working within the Russian Federal Security Service. The intel talked of an advanced special operations unit. This was later confirmed after intercepting a communication between a general and a colonel from a military base located in the Russian town of Kandalaksha. It was discovered that this general was in charge of a group called the Special Training Unit 500. The Special Training Unit 500, or Bodark, is composed of personnel who are senior and experienced Spetnaz troops. They are equipped with the absolute latest in cutting-edge weapons and tactical operations gear, including communications and battlefield management systems. With superior training and extensive combat experience, even over those who are already considered to be at the pinnacle of their game, this unit is the best of the best that Russia has to offer. At this stage, it's completely unknown how the Bodark fit in with the Russian chain of command. However, it's likely that only presidential authority can have this unit deployed much like the ghost teams. In fact, until more information is uncovered, comparing the Bodarks to the ghost is probably the easiest way of understanding their position. Where covert ops teams of Spetnaz could be compared to the US Delta Force, ghost teams are composed of elite Delta Force members, as are the Bodark with Spetnaz. The Ghosts first encountered the Bodark in 2024. Team Hunter had been sent in to rescue a Georgian Special Forces unit who went to investigate the launch of a nuclear missile by Russian ultranationalist group, Raven's Rock. The Ghosts find that only one of them is still alive and has been captured by the Russians. While attempting to rescue him, the Ghosts were ambushed by a Spetnaz unit who were using technology and weapons far superior to what they would usually be equipped with. They would later find out that these troops were a part of the elite Bodark unit and have now betrayed their government, siding with Raven's Rock. Raven's Rock have gone to stage a coup, taking control of the majority of Russia. The ghost team then heads into northern Russia to support loyalist Russian forces in their fight against the Raven's Rock army. After successfully achieving this, the ghost rescue a loyalist Russian general who is the head of the resistance. With his support, they find the Russian president who is being held in a prison and return him to Moscow. 
where they would eliminate a Raven's Rock general. Shortly afterwards, they would encounter more Bodark and Raven's Rock forces. However, the Ghosts were successful in overthrowing them, killing the Raven's Rock leadership, effectively putting an end to the crisis. Following this mission, the Ghosts were made aware of Bodark operatives who had stolen large amounts of classified data. The Ghosts hunted down the operatives, in turn, killing four of the Bodark officers in charge. Despite being taken down by the ghosts, a year later there were sightings of Raven's Rock operatives on Aroa. The ghosts investigate and find not only Raven's Rock, but also a number of Bodark units that have made their way onto the island. Sentinel leader Trey Stone had made a deal with the group. They were planning to carry out a massive bioweapon attack on the United States. The ghosts were successful in locating their operations on Aroa killing key members of both Raven's Rock and the Bodark teams. After the events of Operation Greenstone, where the Ghosts would go on to take down Walker and the bulk of his wolves, Nomad and his team leave Aroa, having now completed their mission. However, months later, the island has quickly become a strategic place for powerful countries who are looking to get a hold of the technology contained within. Seeing this threat, the CIA aims to ease global tensions by giving power on the island to a neutral force, the Outcasts, thus turning Aroa into an autonomous country. One of the groups who have invaded Aroa are the Bodark, who have now teamed up with the remaining Sentinel and Wolves. The Bodark hold large territories and multiple locations of interest across the island, and it's up to the Ghosts to put a stop to their operations once again. One thing that doesn't quite make sense to me with Operation Motherland is where did all of these Bodark come from? From what we can see in the trailer, there is an absolute heap of them, bringing a huge number of vehicles. The ghosts have taken them down a number of times now. One of these was only 12 months ago, during a major operation, where the group they were supporting, Raven's Rock, was attempting to take over one of the global superpowers. I would have thought this mission would have been of greater concern than this little group of islands in the Pacific. So where were all of these troops that are now evading Aroa when their generals needed them? Also, there seems to be a hell of a lot of them. Not just for a spec ops team, but a super elite spec ops team. I don't know, maybe some of this will be addressed on release. As a side note, it's interesting how similar they are to the Wolves. Like I said earlier, the Spetsnaz are essentially Russia's version of Delta Force. The Ghosts are made up of elite, experienced Delta Force members. The Bodark are made up of elite, experienced Spitnaz. The Wolves are ghosts who have betrayed the US government. The Bodark would go on to betray the Russian government. In fact, if you wanted to look into it further, there seems to be a reoccurring theme across a number of hostile factions under the Ubisoft banner. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers!